Hi, welcome to the Dakota Nights Astronomy Festival online version for 2020. My name is Brad Nassett. Thanks for joining me. I am a NASA Solar System Ambassador Outreach Volunteer, so my goal here is to show you a little bit about some Mars missions, particularly the one that just launched in July of 2020. So let's get started. This graphic shows all of the NASA science missions. It's obviously too small to see the details, but I just wanted to give you kind of a feel of all the science and exploration that is going on. For Mars, between the USA, Russia, and the European Space Agency, there have been about 46 missions to Mars so far, and only 19 of them have been successful. Pretty high failure rate. Mars is a tough target. Now, if we're going to Mars, I suppose it'd be nice to go outside and look at the planet. Well, just lucky for us, in August of 2020, throughout this whole summer, in fact, we can see Mars in the night sky. Just look for the little orangish object in the east. It comes up in August somewhere around midnight. Mars is brighter than the stars, so it's quite easy to find. As you can see in the graphic, it takes the Earth one year to go around the Sun. Well, that, that's the definition of a year. And Mars, it takes about two years to get around the Sun. So, when we are close enough together in our orbits, we can launch a spacecraft to Mars. So NASA just launched this mission on July 30th of 2020. But if there would have been a problem, we would have needed to wait for two more years to launch. This is a big rocket. I had the opportunity one time to stand in the flame chute on the launch pad underneath the rocket. I just can't describe how unbelievably huge this is. NASA has had four successful Mars rovers before this 2020 mission, so this will make it number five. This first one is just a little guy here about the size of a microwave oven. The next two are Spirit and Opportunity. What machines? These rovers kept going for years. Spirit eventually got stuck in the sand. And during the great worldwide dust storm on Mars in 2018, that, that we could see with amateur telescopes, by the way, the Opportunities Solar panels got covered with the dust, and it lost sun power, and it went dead. But that was after many years of successful exploration. These two rovers were twins, about the size of a small SUV car. The fourth rover is named Curiosity, and it is still going. This is Carrie. I had a chance to see her in a small informal online visit. She's a Mars rover driver. She gathers all the planning information from the science teams, then tells the rover how to do it. And yes, she is a hardcore geek. Her R2 detour is fully functional and costs more than most cars. And the interesting thing is she built it herself. So this is the rover that just went up in July of 2020. You know, space exploration is a pretty big deal for the human spirit. Just look at this. There were 28,000 essays and name entries from United States students. The final names were chosen from votes that came in from 196 countries. These are the current mission objectives. You might hear this. The term for signs of life is biosignatures. How's that? The rover will put soil samples in sealed tubes for hopefully retrieval and a ride back to Earth from a future mission. There they can analyze the soil samples. 
There is also a small helicopter that is going to take a test spin to see if there's enough air, which is mostly carbon dioxide, by the way, to see if there's enough air to fly it. Now this is a sky crane. This will be the first test of this one. It's going to lower the spacecraft down using artificial intelligence. The reason for this is that the communication time lag between Earth and Mars is too great. I mean, it's like up to 10 minutes. So then people on Earth can't guide it to a landing. It has to do it by itself. So what's going to happen is the sky crane is going to take a video of the surface of Mars and look for boulders and flat spots and fire its retro rockets and position the landing so it lands on a flat surface. Talk about a tense time for NASA engineers. They're going to wait 10 minutes until they get a message back saying whether it was successful or not. Well, if it's not, they won't get a message back. Notice in the picture that the wheels are tipped up, so I think the lander is going to do a belly flop in case it has a little bit of a hard landing so the wheels don't break. Then once it's down there, then the wheels will put themselves into position. This orbiter has been there since 2005. Since completing its science missions, its whole function is to provide a communication relay for all of the Mars rovers. That also just keeps going and going and going. Now this is pretty interesting. NASA has a deep sky network of three antenna communication sites all over the world spaced about a third of the way around the Earth each way so we never lose communication with spacecraft. The photo here is from the site in Spain. All of the antennas are currently being upgraded for higher bandwidth so in the future we'll be able to even get videos from other places. So here's some of the Mars mission team. So I hope this gave you a little insight into the Mars missions. So thank you for joining me.